Large language models are really cool, but there's still some questions on what they're actually useful for, at least in terms of work people do every day. And when it comes to trying to benchmark this, there are limited areas where you can actually have benchmarks that almost directly relate or reflect something people actually do during work. One of the better examples of this is problem sets that students work on, whether they're for computer science or for math, but those still vary a lot. And of course the difficulty based on what university you're at might vary a lot. And an area that I'm intimately familiar with and that I think LLMs show a lot of promise right now in are repetitive tasks that have to do with software engineering. So not exactly having a complete assistant that's as good as maybe an average intern, but when it comes to doing things like writing documentation or generating code for something like an Amazon on AWS config, LLMs are pretty good at this. And they can do these things in a relatively emergent way. Across local models and large models that are from closed companies like Anthropic, this form of benchmarking has become pretty popular. And Anthropic actually talked a lot about this with their internal testing of Clued 3.5, which I thought was pretty cool. They haven't given us a lot of details. I'm working with some people at Anthropic to get a few more. But what I wanna talk about today is a project called Mentat, which is a state-of-the-art coding agent meant to work with GitHub that basically writes PRs based on issues and submits code. So for those of you who don't use GitHub or if you're not a software engineer, basically GitHub is a tool you use to track lots of changes within a software project. When you create issues, these can be new features or problems that need to be fixed. And a pull request is basically when someone has written code relative to that issue and then decides to submit it to be incorporated into all the code that's tracked in what's called a repository. And what's cool is Mentatbot is entirely intended to do this. And when we think about training LLMs or testing them with benchmarks, it, the flow is seemingly identical. It, it, we're just looking at the inputs and the outputs in a few different places that happen to be more practical. So whereas normally you would just have an input prompt and be looking at the output prompt, in this case, you feed Mentatbot a GitHub issue. It uses the GitHub API to see that, you ask it to start, and then it writes the code and submits a PR. It can also do things like reviewing your PRs, reviewing your code and giving comments as well. So the idea here is this is sort of like an intern light you can use that's just a bot that can help you speed up your everyday workflow as an engineer, especially for kind of house cleaning tasks that you usually leave to one of the lesser experienced engineers on your team since a lot of these things are lower risk. Frankly, I think this is the pattern that we're going to see these kinds of models take going forward. I think the idea of having probably 10 to 12 small agents working with you, maybe with some more important or larger ones you're maybe paying a bit more to do things like site reliability engineering to make sure everything looks good and make sure your site stays up. Um, I see that being a really real possibility going forward. And I don't think this is really going to put anyone out of work because if anything, this enables anyone to have a software team without having to raise a ton of money to do so. So I think this is also a great precursor to mixture of agents, which we've start to see really become pervasive, especially with open models. And I really wanna get into Mentatbot. So welcome to AI Flux, let's get into it. Mentatbot is actually based on ChatGPT for Omni. I didn't initially expect this, but granted the previous version was built on top of the GPT-4 API. It makes sense why you would do this because GPT-4 Omni is a relatively known quantity and it's something that everyone can have access to. And there's nothing to say that you couldn't do this with Mixtral or Llama 370B, but I do think there's still certain areas where GPT-4 Omni really has some prowess. So Grant and Bio Bootloader are two developers I follow on Twitter and they both have some really great information about what Mantetbot is. So how are they actually measuring this and calling it state of the art? So they're using something called a uh, software engineer bench or SWE bench. And this is the result of a paper that was written in 2024 that was basically posing the question, how can we actually test the effectiveness of kind of coding or software engineering assistance? And there are two primary leaderboards. So there's the main leaderboard and then the leaderboard light. And specifically uh, leaderboard light is where Mentat bot is claiming to be state of the art. And to be clear, Sweebench Lite is a subset of Sweebench that's been curated to make evaluation less costly and more accessible. So the idea here is it's not entirely different from the main benchmark. It just makes things a bit more straightforward so that you don't have to spend as much money on your API fees or on compute to actually pass and get a rating. And obviously Mentatbot is still in that process because they're comparing to numbers on this benchmark and they're basically proving up that their current version of Mentatbot is 5% better than the previous state of the art, which was Alibaba Lingma agent, which I definitely read the first time as Ligma agent. The other cool thing is this is available right now. So 
this is a three person team that's made this uh, bio, boot, bio bootloader, Jack and Plutobyte all worked on this. The initial intent was to beat, you know, Devin, obviously Alibaba, Factory and IBM Research. And what's cool is with just a few more months of development, since we saw an update from them in April, they were able to do that well outside of the margin of error. And you can see here that when they compare Mentatbot to Alibaba Lingma, they're clearly 5% above, and I think that's pretty cool. And the architecture is actually pretty straightforward. Sometimes when you look at these systems, the architectures are wildly complex, and these are pretty straightforward. And again, I think it just has to do with looking at this as any other kind of benchmark and just picking out where the inputs and outputs are, and there are just a few more steps in between there than there would be with something like MMLU or some of these larger benchmarks. So they call this a cognitive architecture. And basically what this does is for the first step, it's looking at the GitHub issue and gathering context and what it needs to do. Then it figures out a rough plan, kind of writes out what it's planning on doing, like I would as an engineer in an org that uses GitHub. It then thinks about how it will break this into smaller tasks, which is basically called destructuring the plan into individual edits. In this case, a lot of times, this is just picking which files it thinks it actually has to change. And to me, I think this is kind of a really understated portion of this model because we know Gemini 1.5 is pretty great and Gemini Pro are pretty great at coding. And to understand which files in kind of a haystack to pick out and change based on the input um, require a lot of context. So the fact that it can do this and then understand when it doesn't have enough context and go back and maybe leave a comment like I need more information on what to do here. That's pretty cool. And this is actually a flow I've gone through with interns a lot or uh, you know, software engineers that are to my junior. And it's cool to see that agents are pretty much already capable of doing this, which is wild. Even if someone who kind of hacks on top of this technology uh, on a daily basis. So Grant says here that for Sweetbench, we told Mentadbot to write tests in its plan, then use those tests to decide whether or not to add more context, make more edits, uh, completely start again with a note or to finish. And what's interesting is they claim that we don't actually touch the benchmarks test patch or test directives. They just use their own and they were able to achieve this output. And again, right now they're using GPT-4 Omni for everything. And the average cost per benchmark was around $3, which includes more than just one iteration and obviously some failure cases. With one iteration, they solve around 18% of the problems with an average cost of 72 cents in around 50 seconds. So one thing is, I don't think this is actually cheaper at the moment than um, having an intern. Because for instance, if you're doing like 20 of these a day, um, you can start to compare against the hourly rates. I think if you were using local inference, which I have no clue how much that would affect the performance, you know, maybe this would change, but um, it's something that I'm hoping to do when I get a bit more time at the end of this month. And what's really cool is right now, this is a live product. So if someone at Mentetbot wants to give me some credits, I can definitely do a deep dive and compare kind of my local setup to this setup. I've been using a lot of mixture of agents to try to look into this stuff, um, specifically with some uh, monitoring tasks and some things that otherwise I would use an SRE for, because for me, the most valuable time you know, win when it comes to time and just things that I have to think about are mostly SRE related topics. And these usage tiers are pretty interesting. Like for instance, uh, to have an intern full-time would be definitely more than $2,800 a month. And it's limited by um, commits and code reviews and the number of private repos you can actually have connected. So I think this is really cool. I think if they find kind of a reasonable way to collect context from what they're doing, that would also be cool. And I can't wait to see more agentic projects like this continue to push coding forward. And I think coding is a really natural place to start expanding performance with these tools. Just because it's such, it's something these models are already quite good at. There's already a lot of freely available um, training data and it's a clear problem that actually can be solved by this. So as opposed to a lot of crypto stuff where they were always searching for a problem, like this is a problem that already can partially be solved and now it's just an issue of making sure that these models are more capable, can actually solve certain tasks without too much observation and just making it all go faster. And I'm gonna talk about this in a different video, but I think this totally keys into a lot of the work this week that Meta released with what they called the Meta LLM compiler, where they wrote a number of models that try to actually continue to improve uh, code optimization and compiler capabilities, um, which is really cool in a number of very complex ways. And if you wanna learn more about that, let me know in the comments. So yeah, this is an awesome tool. Uh, I might actually pick up a license for this uh, this weekend. 
But yeah, I'm curious if you guys use local LLMs or closed LLMs to code. I've mentioned using Clued 3.5 in the past. Um, but yeah, curious of your thoughts in the comments. As always, I hope you learned something in this video. And if you like our content, uh, please like, subscribe, and share. And we'll see you in the next one.